welcome. I'm Rogers Anderson. We are so happy to have you on the show today with us. I've been looking forward to this particular event for a long time. Uh, I have Thank a person you. that most of us uh, that have lived in Williamson County anytime know Judy Hayes, who lives out in the Burwood community. And uh, what a wonderful delight it is to be able to find out a little bit about the history of Judy Hayes. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, not sure exactly why I'm here, but I'm very <laughs> thankful to be here. Judy, we uh, already know so many of your accomplishments, and that's not really the purpose. You're a county commissioner, been around a I'll just say uh, several days. A long time. long time. Uh, you are a person that um, has given so much to our community, uh, given back um, to a group of uh, citizens from not only Burwood, but all across this county that you represent. There's almost uh, any event you can see you come um, walking in and representing the people and what a love you had for this community. But I want to go back to those days that uh, um, that you started when you were born. We won't go the year, uh, <laughs> but tell us a little bit about Judy Hayes and her early life, the family, and a little bit about the history out in the Burwood community. I have been very blessed. Um, I was blessed to have uh, good parents and a great community and and just a, a loving almost a Norman Rockwell type beginning um, my dad was Leonard Grigsby he was reared in the Bethesda uh, area uh, he uh, was a very hard-working farmer uh, so ethical in every way if he owed you a nickel he would walk a mile to pay you back did not believe in borrowing money he believed in working for money uh, and earning, and he never, a word of advice he gave me early on was never be overpaid. Always work more than you're paid for. And I think that's been a, a good lesson to, to learn. <laughs> My mother was um, a barker from the Barkers of Burwood. She was a school teacher. I always knew her as a school teacher. Very dedicated. Um, she didn't just let the day end when school was over if the children needed something at night or any time else, she was there with them because it, it uh, went longer than the day. She started early and taught in one-room schoolhouses where she made uh, the uh, fire when she got there and she would finish when the last child was either picked up or she carried them home. Uh, a few times there would be some uh, dilemmas in a family that would mean that she would bring the student home to spend the night with us till that emergency was rectified and everything got okay. Um, a very wonderful set of parents that I could not have asked for better. I have one brother who is older than me. He served uh, with the Strategic Air Command and uh, retired Air Force with the Federal Aviation Administration and now lives in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, just recently got back from his granddaughter's wedding and. Uh, so uh, we're still very close. We uh, were reared in, a, I was reared in a community called Burwood. Burwood is an old uh, community. It, uh, in my youth, it had three stores and about six churches and a very um, involved community where everybody helped each other. If something happened, uh, everybody rallied around and helped. Uh, most of the people there were my relatives because on every corner there was an uncle here and an aunt there and a, a cousin <laughs> there. Uh, it was long before we had to worry about any crime. No one locked any doors. Um, if you needed something at Aunt Sarah's, you just went in the back door and you took care of what you needed and, and uh, left again. So now, Judy, let me interrupt you a little okay. bit, let you catch your breath. Where did the name Burwood come from? Uh, that's interesting because when the settlement of the community started with Parson John Pope in 1805. Um, he built a house called Eastview, which happens to be the house that I was born in, uh, which was the first house built in Burwood. And as the development started in that area, and later a Dr. Williams came, the community was called Williamsburg. Then in the very uh, uh, late 1800s, 
as post offices and all were coming in and into the early 1900s, uh, Williamsburg was a name already chosen, so it was refused by the post office. For a brief time, they called it Shawtown because there were several Shaws there. But the Shaw family really didn't much like that name. So a, a member of the Pope family had been reading a novel by a Mrs. Humphreys, and it was Ellsworth was the name, I think, of the novel. And there was a utopia community called Burwood in that novel. And that was suggested there was not another Burwood around, so it has stuck for all these years. So well over, probably approaching 100 years mm -hmm. uh, plus been the name. Right. When, um, when you think about those early days, and, and of course, it would be interesting to know, and I, and I suspect you don't really know, you might, you know, what pay did your mother, a teacher, receive in those early days? Well, she received less than $60 a month. And many times, uh, I remember one time she said, the county did not have the money to pay for her. <laughs> and aren't, aren't we proud that doesn't happen anymore? And she went two or three months with no pay until they caught that back up. My dad would work from sun up to sundown, and as a boy he said that he remembered working and he would work most of the week and get a quarter to 50 cents, whatever the traffic would bear and whatever people could afford to pay. I remember the first year that I taught and the first check I received. I was very proud and I remember going from Bethesda where I was teaching back to Burwood to show mother, not gloatingly, but very proudly of here I'm, I, I have a check. And I remember it quickly turning to embarrassment because my check was more than her check. I started out at a higher pay than after her 20 plus years of teaching mm. that she was earning. I never mentioned pay to her again. No, I'd say all of us have experienced that with our parents more often than not. I know that was very true of my lifestyle when I first left home. Go back into those early days, you're growing up. Uh, what was the life of a, of a Judy Grisby, Grisby um, like, running around? What did, what did young ladies, girls do during that period of time? Well, you may not believe, but uh, I was somewhat a tomboy. Living on a farm, I had chores. Uh, I carried uh, the mules and the horses to water. I got the milk cans down to get ready for, for milking. Uh, we had chores at home. We, we helped uh, before you did anything else, but there was no television early on. And of course, uh, with my mother's emphasis on education, it was you had your homework before you did anything else. And that was what, what we did. I had to, uh, the year I rode, uh, or in high school, I rode the bus to school. The bus uh, picked me up at the corner of Evergreen Road at 6.30 in the morning. We went to uh, Thompson Station where we unloaded at the Early's Market and stayed at Early's Market while the bus made a run through Buckner Lane and through that area and came back to, Buck to uh, Early's Market and picked us up and brought us on to school to get here by 8. In the afternoons, I would get home at 5 to 5.30 with the same type, type route. So it's... Um, it's an unbelievable uh, change that, that I see today. But uh, I rode bicycles. I had a horse. Uh, I, I loved my animals. I always picked up strays. Um, and I had neighbors and friends that, that we were around. Went to Burwood School. It was a close-knit school, one through eight. But we were, we were tight. We were close. And um, neighbors were good. We would have ice cream suppers. We would have uh, activities. I saw in my research recently that um, in one year back in the um, early 50s, uh, Lester Scruggs and, uh, <laughs> came out to perform at Burwood School. So we had festivals and we had uh, different things. I also found where in 1940, which was before me, uh, they talked about having a county fair in Burwood. So it's, we were very busy. We had the, uh, my dad went to Loaf uh, at the Burwood Huff store on Saturday night, uh, and that's where he gathered all the news. He came home, and we'd always know that he was going to bring us an ice cream cone home or an ice cream popsicle, uh, but he'd always act like he was surprising us. And Mother and I'd always prepare and say, wonder what he's bringing tonight, and she'd say, I don't know, but act surprised. And it was always just very, very loving family. 
He left the area, went away to school. I did. Um, eventually, uh, uh, there was a man that must have stole your heart. Well, interestingly, we, we went to school together at uh, high school. He was a senior when I was a freshman. And um, we, we were friends first. Uh, I was in the 4-H program, very active in 4-H with beef cattle. So was he. So we were showing together, but just hated the fact that he always beat me. <laughs> uh, he, had the, he had the advantage of, of really having the, the best stock and bought, bought the good breeds, and he always, uh, always won. But uh, I determined I would get even someday, and I think I'm still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about Jim Hayes here. She's not mentioned his name yet. Um, who is, in his own right, um, had an impact in our community too. His family has been a great influence. Um, you come back, uh, you return, we'll use that term, from school. Uh, with your strong ethic background, your very uh, varying hard work ethic that uh, your mom and your dad instilled, and uh, you settle back. You could have settled a lot of other places. Uh, you could have um, teaching in those early days. I remember from my family because you and I are. I'm a little older, but we're we're in there together. And I grew up in the East Tennessee Hills, uh, but. Um, it, it was a tough time for, for young ladies coming back and teaching in the community, but it was also one of those most rewarding jobs that one could have. You usually were thought of you were either a teacher or a nurse, and I didn't think I wanted to be a nurse. Um, my mother's sisters and her family and my dad's family were all teachers. My Aunt Vivian, my Aunt Cleo, uh, they were all teachers. Uh, on my other side, I had my Aunt Polly and my Aunt Jessie. They were also teachers. So I was around teaching all the time. And when I went to uh, Lipscomb, and graduated from Lipscomb, I did that in three years because I didn't want to waste any time. I'd been working uh, part-time at Beasley's and Frank's and Franklin, and, and I didn't want to uh, spend any time just gathering moss. It was so hard to, to uh, get in from, from Burwood to work. So I went to school in three years and uh, did a double major. Uh, and was real glad to have the, the thought of um, teaching. But I didn't really know at the time that I was going to be teaching elementary school till Mr. Uh, W.C. Yates, who had been a teacher of mine and had been a well-respected friend always. Um, my mother and he had been friends early on. And he called me when I was home the year before I graduated, uh, or a few months before I graduated, and asked if I was going to be graduating and getting my degree. And I said, yes, in June. And he says, well, I have a place opening up at Bethesda, uh, third grade, would you take it? And I said, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> and so that, that deal was closed over the phone before a single application was put in at all. Of course, today we can't do that. You know, you can't do that. And with the wisdom then, I mean, I don't know. He was just, he was just taking his chances. So I taught at Bethesda, it was like going home because I had spent a lot of time as a child in Bethesda. And several people watching this show may not know who Mr. Yates is. The, you and I take it for granted that people know we have a Yates uh, actually re referred to as the Yates Vocational Center. Right, W.C. Yates Drive. But uh, he was a, a man that uh, invested many years into this community. He did. We know you taught at Bethesda and... Uh, then at Grassland. Then at Grassland. Uh, which is an area that when I moved here came and your name popped up during those years uh, when uh, I remember the, the name Judy Hayes being brought to the forefront in, in the Grassland community. But why the, I mean, I look back in the 1980, mid-80s, 1986, you'd already begun to be involved in things. You've uh, uh, you're, you're synonymous with events, all, certainly in Burwood and, 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 and Flat Creek and uh, the Bethesda community, Franklin area. Since 19, mid-1980s, 85 and 86, uh, you decided to run for county commission and had been in, uh, if my memory serves me correct, 86 was your first uh, attempt at getting in the political arena and you At the same time as yours, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> you and I came on board together. Uh, we, uh, 
I had darker hair. Your hair's still dark. It always has helped. <laughs> <laughs> Why the move to get involved in the polity? What motivated you to go that route? Well, it was real interesting because I had been working uh, in the radio. WIZO had been, of course, Jim's love, and he'd put that on the air. And I had uh, started to work with him one summer when, when we were out of school. And I had liked it so much because I had gotten to a point with my educational career, I wanted uh, to maybe go further. So I was going to go and get back some graduate hours, which I did some. And um, we, were, we were still working in radio and were, uh, I'd been doing produ productions one time as an Easter Bunny, hopping up and down Main Street. But uh, <laughs> well, it, we could find some pictures uh, that, of that. Well, that would be interesting. <laughs> And uh, we, we just had a good time, but I really became uh, very interested in the county as a county and the city as a city and, and what the events meant and what the nonprofits meant and, and how much people could do with their personal involvement. But I had no intention when we sold the radio station, I was already working with animal closet, uh, causes and other things. I had no idea of ever seeking office. That was the furthest thing from my mind. And I had a group of men uh, who came to my house one evening with a petition already signed. They had two pages of petition signed because uh, Mr. Lavender was not running anymore. And um, they wanted me to run. And I, I first said, absolutely not. Who, I mean, it was just so foreign to even thought. And I said, what, what could I do? And, and uh, they said, well, we're just not going to take no for an answer. But so because we're afraid you'll tear this up, we're going to take this back with us. But you keep thinking about it. Well, then I really began exploring. I talked to a lot of people, and they said, well, give it a try. And I really felt like, well, I'll just uh, basically leave it in the Lord's hands, and okay, I'll put my name in the pot, and, and we'll just see what happens. And the rest is history. That was 28 years ago. When you think about that period of time and, and your your... I'm sitting here thinking of an old expression, uh, acre didn't fall too far from a tree. <laughs> <coughs> and that's not as a bad remark, that is uh, your strong involvement in your community, your upbringing by your mom and dad, uh, your admission that uh, you loved animals and oftentimes brought in strays. That was long before we ever had the Animal Control and Adoption Center. But for those folks watching, Judy, Judy is one of those people that if you think about um, the issues of animals, she's involved. If you think about issues in the early days of our transformation of <clears throat> solid waste, she's involved. Uh, if you think about those early days of trying to find somebody who's going to do recycling long before it was ever <laughs> mentioned in, in, the, in the area here, maybe in the bigger cities, it was Judy Hayes that was involved. And there are many other people, men and women, that you have been involved with. Um, it, it's it's so gratifying over the years to see some of those causes, and in those early days, uh, there was it wasn't necessarily about making money, but it was preserving and and keeping our environment, or taking care of animals that couldn't take care of themselves. And that same issues, those same issues that existed back in your early start of a career, are still there today with this population growth that we continue to have, Judy. Absolutely. Uh, farmers were the first recyclers. Yes. We, we didn't throw things away when I was growing up. Uh, mother canned and we reused all the jars. Uh, we took the old rags uh, after they could not, from the shirt they became the rags. After the rags they would become the dust uh, rags and then after that they became fuel to start the fire. So they were never wa um, wasted. And I think it's very important that we take care of our environment because it, we need to preserve it for our future generations. We never even um, uh, had threw away uh, uh, cans to any great degree because we didn't use that many cans. Most things were, right. were homegrown and, and we grew our gardens and we worked in the gardens and, and we helped feed our neighbors. We didn't, if we knew anyone hungry anywhere around, we, we personally tried to take it. And that's just not my family, that's not us. That's the way that we lived then, we took care of each other. Uh, senior um, concerns are a great concern for me as, as our children concerned, animals, all the, all the things to preserve what we have in our county, 
to make the balance of our good, strong economic growth, but also to remember why people want to come here. It has to do with the preservation of our quality of life, and our preservation is something that we, we take very seriously, and I think our historic preservation is very important. We still own, my brother and I still own the historic house Eastview. Nothing would please me better than it to be preserved. I love the agricultural uh, history. We're losing a lot of it in our county, but I think children could learn so much from the farm life, and I long to have something type of, of, of camp for, for farming. I love what we do at the fair, the Little Ones Farms. I love what the Gentry Farm is doing, the educational uh, day camps. I think it's such a good, healthy life that everyone would benefit with that type of thing. Uh, this county is just a wealth of enrichment for everybody, and I just think everybody needs to do what they can to preserve it. Judy, if you could go back uh, a little bit and then fast forward again. I know you've seen a lot of changes mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I was not born and raised here like you were. Um, and on this particular show, we've had some wonderful people to talk about the history. Uh, the late uh, Ed Moody, uh, who marvelous man, marvelous man, marvelous that has contributed so much, and it was never about him. It was no. always about others. And exactly. uh, his early days of uh, carrying the note, as we say, for an individual to buy tires or have his car fixed, or in those early days even to. Uh, just have a little basic oil change. Most young men change their own oil. There's no one left in need there. Nobody no. left in they need is not. my point. But if you had to, if you had a crystal ball that goes backwards and then look at that crystal ball coming forward, you've experienced a significant amount of growth in this community or observed, literally been involved in a lot of this growth by uh, not only being involved in community affairs, but uh, the political side too. You're on the forefront, you're on the cutting edge of a lot of businesses, you're involved in the chamber, you're involved in economic development, <clears throat> but you're also involved in our four-legged uh, furry friends that we um, need to protect and take care of. But if I threw the curveball, as a friend of yours, you know, often says, What's been the most significant change mm. that um, you could observe in your, uh, and I don't think I would hurt your feelings if I said this, a half a century uh, mm. on this earth. Um, has it been the infusion of, of, uh, of the growth or has it been the migration of uh, our communities uh, changing environment and farm life and, and it's hard to put your hands around it. Uh, I know you embrace change but at the same time you embrace let's don't let's don't take away all of those things. You mentioned the fair. I, I do. I think what we're needing to make sure that we continue to do is we gather the old in maybe a presenting it a new way. Uh, the fair as I referenced um, 1940, there was a fair, they, they called it a fair in Burwood, but there was an uh, early affair in 1955 here in, in the community. We are reinventing that or re reestablishing that and going back with much of the preservation of the old ways. It's, um, we have lost a lot of the um, emphasis. I had a lady once who um, at the fair was going through the Little One's Farm and she wanted to know what kind of plant cashmere came from. And I thought, how far are we away from the farm? When I was teaching, we were just still a little bit on the farm. In Bethesda, we were still on the farm. When I was teaching at Grassland, we were about a generation away from the farm. Now we are multi-generations mm -hmm. away. And I think that has made the change because people have moved here uh, from outside the areas where they've had no farm background. I see that as the infusion of the people making a great deal of difference. The traffic is something we'll always have to deal with. This morning I had a traffic jam, jam in Burwood <laughs> uh, when I was getting back in. I had to wait for, I think it was about six cars that came at the intersection at Huff's store before I could pull out. That's unheard of because growing up, Dad would sit on the porch and we could identify every single car and he'd say, there goes John again, there goes Buddy again. And, and we know every car. That is not the case anymore. But we need to take all the good values that we've had from yesterday, 
all the good things and make sure we keep and preserve those. And I think the county as a whole, with your leadership, and I give you great credit, um, is trying to do that. We're trying to do that. But it's all about partnerships. No one does anything in this world by themselves. No one accomplishes anything without partnerships and everybody pulling together. The community of Burwood is a great place to live because of all the people who've gone there. And, and I've just been privileged to be a part of it. But um, this county is great. And I could not ask for a better place in the world to live. Well, and I, I would echo every single thing but I, that you've said. I uh, will throw in the added caveat that it's, uh, that, uh, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful experience here in the last few years, certainly because of the uh, Judy Grisby Hayes involvement, too, to make Thank this you. a little better place for all of us. You're a wonderful Christian lady. Thank You're you. a, a lady that many people, young ladies, could follow around and, <clears throat> and gain some strong values. Although I have seen you. Uh, sharpen the tongue and get with some folks when you needed to uh, to set the record straight. But I'm not going there in that conversation <laughs> because there was probably a need for that. We've got to have about two minutes left <clears throat> on our show and it goes so fast. But I know that I've probably overlooked something that um, you would like to get the message out uh, in, the, in, the, in the few seconds that we have left something that's personal or near dear to your heart that I didn't touch on. Well, that, that was not anything I expected. Uh, I guess really the fact that it has been just such a privilege to be um, able to be a part of this community um, and, and to be involved in so many things. I do like to, to be involved. Uh, my husband's always saying, if a dog barks on the square, I like to be there. I don't, I don't want to miss things uh, because I do care what happens. I care about the people. I care about the, uh, the education. And I think we've got to do a real good job of staying close-knit, making sure that we honor our veterans, make sure that we honor our, our citizens, and give credit to those like Ed Moody, as we've been referencing, and the many others that, who have uh, made this community what it is today. And I just am very fortunate to be just one one member of this 200,000 population of this county. 200,000, what a way to end the show with one of those 200,000 peoples and that we have, Judy Hayes from Burwood, a, a wonderful person and Thank a you. person that I think is, uh, uh, I claim, is a dear friend. Thank she you. will always be there when you need her. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, it's my honor. I'm Rogers Anderson. We'll see you around the county with someone else that makes a history and a difference in Williamson County later down the road.